It is Friday, February 9th, 2024. I'm producer Alex. I'm Jules. And I'm Owen. And this is Studio, Studio 595. Welcome back to Studio 595. This is episode 9 of season 2. Uh, and for some reason, I I was not informed about this, but Owen and Jules have seemingly switched places today. No, oh, I'm just normal. Same as always. Yeah. So let's carry on with the episode as we do always. So with the big game that is copywritten, and therefore I won't name it oh, until, until now when I realize that we aren't monetizing Super Bowl. Super. we aren't monetizing the, the 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 episodes and so we can say that the super bowl or the superb owl or the big game or however else you want to call it to avoid copyright strikes um is occurring this friday uh and so the culmination of i think everything america uh i thought that with these two who do not follow sports and do not really watch any sports to my knowledge. I thought racing that we could uh, quiz you both on uh, the logos of NFL teams and guessing what cities and what the names are and whatnot. And so I just decided since there's 32 teams in the NFL, we're just going to do the ones that actually made the playoffs. Um, Only the important ones. Yes. Uh, which is a shot at my, uh, and everyone can laugh at me. I'm a New England Patriots fan. I grew up in New England. Um, I know that one. And so we are, we are doing terrible this year. Anyways, so how this is going to work, I'm just going to show the logo to uh, both Owen and Jules, uh, whoever they may be. Um, and we are going to just... Can I, can I ask a question? Yes. So is it... If we guess the team name, we get a point, and also the place they're from, we get a point? Yes. I like this. Okay. Jules. Owen. Jules. Jules. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you, Jules. It's not that hard. You are to my right, and so therefore, in the spirit Jules of right. of the uh, Super Bowl, um, you will call this um, in the air. It can either point towards me or point towards the camera. You call it in the air. Camera. You, camera. Okay. Which... Green. There you go. Okay. Therefore. Oh, it's all warm. So we're going to start with this logo, as you can see on screen. And here it is, it. visible for you both. One point for the city, one point for the team name. So three, three two, two, one. Denver Broncos. The footballers of New, New Hampshire. Hampshire. <laughs> Neither is correct. This is indeed the logo of the Cleveland Browns. That's what I'm talking about. Let's go Cleveland Browns. Brown? Let's go Browns. Yes. It's Browns. So round two. Oh. What is this team? Three, two, one. Miami Dolphins. California. Miami Dolphins and California Dolphins. The answer is the Miami Dolphins. So Jules gets two points. Owen gets one. The uh -oh. third round is this one, and I have blocked the lettering. I see this. Which would give you where the team is located. <laughs> Three, two, one. Boston Celtics. Detroit Internet Explorer. <laughs> That is a very. I was looking at it it's before just you Internet raised Explorer. it. Internet Explorer. It That's, does. It does look like Internet Explorer. I own. I own. I, I don't even care if I get this one wrong uh, because you Jules, designed this logo. Jules uh, answered with a basketball team, the Boston Celtics, and this this logo was of the L.A. Rams. Oh, close enough. Oh. It's close enough. Yeah. I, Both animals. I understand you can it now. Probably not get further away geographically to Both Boston animals, than so it doesn't matter. Los Angeles. I, I'm sorry, Los Angeles. I like Celtics. Your, your logo. I get it now. It's like it did look like a talent. It though. just looked like yeah. I, I did it. round four. Change my ways. Oh. There we go. <laughs> Oh, I know this one. This is an iconic one, especially if you're in the 90s, which was the last time this team was good. Oh, I need to remember where they're from. That's my football opinion of the week. 
All right, three, two, one. New England Patriots. New England Patriots. Washington colonialists. <laughs> Washington <laughs> colonialists. It's America. Oh, this, you silly goose. This would be indeed the Dallas Cowboys. And so you were, you were unironically not that far off with Washington because they're in the same division and they're bitter rivals with Washington. Um, what do the Patriots look like? Let's let's clarify. Yeah, I, I'm probably really. I'm dumb. confused. <laughs> oh, it that's has a man. It's, it's just a some man. guy. It has it's a guy. Through four rounds, we are still at two to one. Neck and neck. Neck and neck. Anyone's game. Oh. I have covered the team name here. Oh. Otherwise, it, you both of you would have had a point. But what is this logo? Three, two, one. Berg Steel. Pittsburgh Steelers. There you misspelled it so you didn't get a point. No. -uh. It says steel. Both of you get two points. Yay. And I think that is a significant for the city of Pittsburgh that both of you that don't, like how don't have a lot of sports. For him. So it is currently Jules at four, Owen at three as we go to round six. Mm, okay. who's, who's this little uh -oh. buddy? It's a plane. No, it's, uh, it's actually a bird. Eagles aren't birds. I feel like we both got eagle, and so now at this point, it's really just a guessing game of which one of us gets the closest to whatever place this is. Three, <laughs> two, one. The Eagles Hotel California. The Wisconsin. <laughs> I'm Jules. I am tempted to remove a point Can for you see a it? very. You know what? <laughs> you sold to the. You, you committed to the bit. You committed to the bit. I'll give you a point. So this <laughs> logo is of the Philadelphia Eagles. I wouldn't have gotten that. So it's five to four as we reach Philly now the Eastern. midpoint. Oh, um. I'm interested to see the results of this. We already said Texas. No, we said Dallas. Yes. There are not two Texas teams. Why not? It's huge. Don't look at me like that, because now I think I'm wrong. I think I'm wrong. That what, would make sense. Like, what North team, and South Texas is like two different What states. team does this oh. belong to? And I'm going to I'm going to exploit a technicality in the rules. So, we'll see how this goes. There is no technicality. <laughs> there is a technicality that I've figured out in, okay. in this recording. Would you like to wager a point for it? Ooh. Yeah, I'll wager a point on that. Okay, Ooh. okay. If, it, if it's a technicality... Deal. Deal. Then, then I'll give you the point, and if not, then I will remove a point. Three, two, one. Virginia cow. Virginia cows. I've chosen the name of my place as <laughs> ram and the mascot as bull, and that can go either way, which is the technicality in the rule. Ram bull. I'm not okay. wrong. I'm not wrong. Virginia cows, ram bull, uh, I will be deducting a point. No, no, no. Because this <laughs> is the logo of the Houston Texans. That's yeah. dumb. That's just, just dumb. Texas? That's just silly. That's just silly. I was, you I was, I was waiting for you to, to, to like. You threw me off. I, I was trying not to give it away. The fact that I was looking at you why when you said there's no have... two Texas teams. Well, I knew that that was the hint, and that's why I was annoyed because I was like, oh, I'm just gonna wing it. And it is because of Jules's wager. It is now tied four to four. So how fitting. We go to number eight. Ooh. This is the this is the little leprechaun man. What? Is this not the little leprechaun man? I can't answer that, Jules. <laughs> am I right or am I wrong? I can't answer that. Is it the little leprechaun man? He can't say. Just I, it's the I same will, colors. It's I the same say, colors as the leprechaun man. I will this start is... giving hints and I will only say uh, the division name, which will hopefully help at least directionally. This team plays in the NFC North. I want to say it's the Little Leprechauns, and it's the Little Leprechaun like this. I know exactly the picture that I'm thinking of. Am I right or am I wrong? Three, two, one. Minneapolis Leprechaun guy. Greenland fishes. This would be the Green Bay Packers. Oh, get out of here. I would have um, said the Greenland Green Jules, Fishes. Jules, what you were thinking was the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. 
Thank you. That's what Which I was thinking. Which is a college of. team. Okay, that's, well that's the one I remember. This is what you were thinking. That's of. the guy I'm thinking of. <laughs> that's him. Yeah. He's squared up. He is squared up. <laughs> also, the back of his head is squared up too. Look at it. Round number nine. I like this one. This one's sick. Okay. This one's my favorite. This is how you make a logo. This, this is how you make a logo. Three. Two, one. Pittsburgh Pirates. Louisiana Pirates. Louisiana Pirates and Pittsburgh Pirates. And they have a pirate ship in their stadium and it has a cannon whenever they get a touchdown. Are you serious? Yeah, I'm being serious. They do have a pirate ship in their oh. stadium and they do have a, I believe they have a cannon. They have a cannon that they shoot off when they get touchdowns. Very However, cool. they aren't the Pirates and they're not in Pittsburgh. They're the Buccaneers. This They're would the be Buccaneers. This, this would be the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The Buccaneers. Oh. The Pittsburgh Pirates are the baseball team of Pittsburgh. Round ten. It, it shares a name with the famous historical figure from the West, like old timey West. Like the the rhyming scheme of their name. Their name. The place's name. The name. Oregon. Cow, bison. Colorado Rams. Oregon bison. Colorado, Colorado is a Rams. Right, but I think Rams That's is. not a ram. Yeah, it is. Colorado Rams is the name of a college team. Is it really? <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know what's funny? Well, it's Colorado like... State Rams. This is the logo of the Buffalo Bills. Buffalo Wild oh! Wings. Buffalo Wild Wings. Buffalo Bill. Round 11. Angry Birds. <laughs> <laughs> I am such a genius. This team plays in the AFC North and it shares the name of a famous work from a very famous American poet. I will give the hint now that I don't know if it made the cut, but we were discussing that this is indeed a raven. One. Baltimore Ravens. I wrote. Hey, I heard that. <laughs> that is indeed the Baltimore Ravens. Is Baltimore yeah. in the poem? Uh, no. no. Uh, Edgar Allan Poe is just from Baltimore. Okay. Final three. Okay, three, two, <laughs> one. one. Detroit Lions. Detroit Lions? Food... Food Lion. The store? Yes, this is indeed the Detroit Lions. Mm. Uh, mm. so, Owen, you have seven. Jules, you have eight okay, as we more. enter the last two. And these are the teams that will play on Sunday. Three, two, one. Kansas City Chiefs. Kentucky... Air arrows. Arrows. You know what? It's not a... not that far off. Um, oh. They play in Arrowhead Stadium, but they are indeed the Kansas City Chiefs, <laughs> which is two points. Oh. As we go to the last one. God, I Owen am so upset at this. And honestly, if Owen manages to get this 100% right, I will just call it a draw because the odds of that happening are wild. So, what is this team? Three, two, one. San Francisco Giants. Obliterators. The San Francisco Giants and the San Francisco Why are they Obliterators. Giants? Why are they Giants? So, the San Francisco Giants are a baseball team. I don't like this game. You, you have named like- <laughs> Three baseball teams Three, at this point. three baseball Do teams. Two for, by accident, Do I get a point for creativity? Uh, you know what? Because it's inconsequential. Yeah. Yay! This was the logo of the San Francisco 49ers. Jules wins. That oh. will go down in the history books as a Jules win. As a Jules win this for a competition. So yes. Jules gets the extra pay now. <laughs> <laughs> what? We'll be right back to the show, but first let's check in on our weekly updates on this week's can't miss minutes. Superintendent Dr. Robbie Hooker has released his 2024 State of the District video address, highlighting some of the achievements throughout CCSD this year and the direction the district is heading. You can watch this address on the CCSD YouTube channel or on the website at clark.k12.ga.us. The district has also released its winter 2024 progress update for the new five-year strategic plan, so be sure to head over to the website and check it out. And now some congratulations. Congratulations to Clark Central senior Patrick Allen and senior Art Conway of Cedar Shoals High School for being named the 2023-24 star students for their schools. 
Patrick Allen was also announced to be the Clark County System winner, which includes all public and private schools in the county. And he will now compete in the Page 4 Region Contest for the chance to advance to the state competition. Patrick chose Clark Central Social Studies teacher Elliot Slane as his star teacher, while Art chose Cedar Shoals math teacher Brant Hacker as his star teacher. Congratulations as well to Miss Ashley Faglier, first grade teacher at Whit Davis Elementary School for being named CCSD's Employee of the Month for February. Anyone in the community may nominate a full-time CCSD employee with at least one full year of service for the Employee of the Month award. Please go to bit.ly slash ccsdeom for more info and to get started. And finally, the Clark County Board of Education has approved the hire of Mr. Terry Ligon as a new assistant principal at Clark Central High School. Mr. Ligon will fill the vacancy created by Tamika Henson's promotion to associate principal following former associate principal Dr. Cindy Lowe's retirement in December 2023. You get all this news and much more on our website, across our social media platforms, and through the weekly Better Together newsletter. Please go subscribe to that newsletter on our website, clark.k12.ga.us. And now over to Owen and Jules for more Studio 595. And now for something actually important. Amelia Earhart's plane might have been found. A company has been driving across the ocean for about three months now, using sonar and different types of technologies to get down to the bottom of the ocean and 100 miles away from the island where Amelia Earhart was planning to refuel a very, very compelling image of a plane exactly like hers has been found 16,000 feet below the surface of the ocean. So there's a very good chance that is Amelia Earhart's plane. Now there are other theories, but so far this is the one that holds the most water. Hey guys, what percent of our audience is slimy, sweaty gamers like myself? Really? Then you might have heard of a little something called Pal World. Pokemon dialed up to 11. Very immersive. You can capture pretty much everything. Everything you can see, including the people. Just throw the ball at them and you can just get them in there. Um, I've played it myself. I highly recommend it. It's a blast. If you like Pokemon and if you like good old explosions, give, give it a try. And I just have a single story this week, but it's a bit of a wild one and it takes place over several years. Uh, a strange occurrence happened at a San Antonio Spurs game recently when a bat entered the arena and caused a delay in the game between the Spurs and the visiting Minnesota Timberwolves. Uh, the story seemed to end when the Coyote, who is the mascot for the Spurs, uh, managed to catch the flying animal um, so that the game could actually be resumed. There are two parts of this that I want to elaborate on. One, the Coyote himself. Uh, you may notice that he is naturally dressed up as Batman during this capture of a bat. Um, and if you think you've seen this clip before, if you're into basketball, you're right because this is the fourth time that an NBA game in San Antonio at the AT&T Center has been disrupted by a bat within the last 15 years. And this is the third time that the Batman costume wearing coyote has captured the bat itself. Um, so back in 2009, the very famous uh, clip of then Spurs uh, star Manu Ginobili uh, swatting the bat mid-air to stop the, the, the delay in the game um, to knock down the bat and he carried it away in his hand like a star would, I would imagine. Um, in 2015, the now Batman wearing coyote mascot decided to save the day himself in pregame warmups by capturing the bat in a net. Um, and funny enough, that was also against the Timberwolves that game. Uh, and in 2019, um, the bat decided to wait a little bit longer after pregame warmups and came out three minutes after the game had started against the Pelicans in the AT&T Center. Um, and once again, the Coyote swiped it down wearing a Batman costume. Uh, I'm sure in no part, uh, because by then Manager Nobly had retired the year before, and so I guess the Coyote decided that this was his domain. Uh, and this also wraps up with the recent story that the exact same thing happened, that a bat was swatted mid-air, caught in a net by the Batman costume-wearing Coyote mascot for the San Antonio Spurs in the middle of an NBA game. Um, that's oddly specific. Why does this keep happening? 
Um, actually, as it turns out, thanks to an approximate migration path provided by 538 uh, during the third bat incident of 2019, um, Turns out that the largest bat colony in the world resides in Bracken Cave uh, Reserve in Comal County, Texas, which is 25 miles northeast of San Antonio. And the Mexican free-tailed bats, and I don't mean a few, I mean 15 million that come on a yearly basis to Comal County, Texas, um, were, are traveling their path from Mexico to the San Antonio area. And so, they travel into this arena and sometimes one of them will just sneak in there and it's in his path and so then he just flies into the arena and then gets swatted down by what I can only be assumed to be a very confusing situation of a bat being swatted down in a net by a coyote or a human dressed up as, an, as a coyote. Um, and so, you know, if you think about it, 15 million bats visiting every year for several years. Uh, and the fact that there have only been four incidents in the last 15 years, not bad. Before we close out the show, we have a very special set of interviews um, today. We are celebrating the end of uh, National School Counseling Week by interviewing, of course, naturally, school counselors across CCSD, including the Director of School Counseling, Ms. Veronica Johnson. So Johnson, please enjoy. Johnson. Big names here. So please uh, enjoy yeah. this presentation uh, specifically for National School Counselors Week. And if you haven't said it already, please contact your uh, school's counselor and just wish them a happy National School Counselors Week, uh, or just say thank you if you see them during school today. And give them $20. Optional. I am Veronica Johnson, Director of School Counseling. My name is Melina Cole, and I am a school counselor at Whit Davis Elementary School, and this is my third year at Whit Davis. My name is Lindsay Bailey. I am the school counselor at Timothy Road Elementary. This is my second year at Timothy Road um, and my eighth year as a school counselor. Hi, I'm Joy Moore. I am a school counselor. I serve eighth grade currently and I've been here almost 10 years. So first and foremost, I am a product of Clark County School District. I'm a 95 graduate of Cedar. I always knew I wanted to come back home and work, and I always knew even as a teenager that I wanted to work in the schools, but I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do. I really wanted to impact um, female students, especially black and brown students, students that look like me. And I also wanted people to know that there's more to life than Athens. Yes, Athens is my home. I really wanted kids to see, to be empowered Power to do something different. I was really interested in healthcare. Um, I grew up, my mom was a nurse, so I was really interested in being a doctor because I always wanted to help people in some way. And I grew up in a really small town in Southwest Georgia. I didn't ever have a school counselor that I remember, so that was not a career I was really exposed to. Later on in college, um, I kind of decided not to go into healthcare any longer, but knew I still wanted to help um, and specifically really loved working with kids. I discovered that you can be a school counselor actually by watching Friday Night Lights. That light bulb sort of went off for me and um, that's when I was like, wow, I can help kids and um, work in a school. So I was um, a teacher for a while and before that I was actually a, a para pro um, at an elementary school and then I taught for a year um, sixth and seventh grade math and then I taught three years at the high school. My seniors that I worked with, um, a lot of them actually inspired me to pursue school counseling. Uh, we would have a lot of different conversations um, during our class about you know what they're doing um, currently to get them ready for when they were going to graduate. I found it so interesting that these students already had a vision of specifically what they wanted to do. I love teaching, but I felt like I wanted more and those conversations really geared my interest in in school counseling and so that was something that I decided to pursue. I grew up in a family with lots of helpers and so to me helping other people you know in different capacities. My mom was a teacher so I've always kind of had an interest in being that support person. 
I was growing up, I saw a lot of mental illness in my community. I became very interested in counseling. Went and got my master's and started working in various settings and now here I am in the school counseling field. We're working to, you know, get the graduation grade up. We're working to get that social emotional learning up in our students. All of that matters, um, whether it's a district mission or a school mission. Generally, school counselors, I think, help schools by just being a safe place for kids to come to. Um, I teach kids that I'm here to help them with any problem. It can be a problem with school, a problem with friends, a problem at home, but I'm here to help them through whatever they need. Just being there to come alongside them, I think, helps kids in the bigger picture. It helps our school by um, getting kids where they need to be to be able to learn, to know that they're safe and that when they face problems, um, you know, they can work through it and they can get through it. We do so much with mental health in the school setting as a whole. Middle school we do a lot of that because once they get to high school I think it's a lot more academic and college and career focused. So we do spend a lot of time really focusing on the social emotional needs of the kids and we've kind of evolved as a profession where we're not doing so much of what used to be considered a guidance counselor role. I think school counselors do a lot to push the mission of the school. I think a lot of the programs that we run feeds into what the school is trying to achieve overall, um, whether it's uh, school climate, school culture. For me, the most rewarding part is the opportunity to really build relationships with the kids. They're super fun. I know middle school can be super challenging. Um, and a lot of people say that they could never work with this age group because you never know what you're gonna get on any day. But for me, I love that challenge. Um, and so for me, it's being able to also watch them grow. They change so much from the time they start here in sixth grade. And then we can follow them through, through the graduation of high school. And so that's been very exciting. I think the biggest part about providing students what they need is not approaching it as a one fit um, for everyone. I think really understanding where the student is struggling um, and trying to nail that down, get to the root of what is causing them to either be upset or not being able to focus in class or not being able to express themselves, getting to the root of that. And then from there, trying different things. So it does take you know, a while and patience to go through that process. You really have to make it unique and personalized to what the student needs. I think really what inspires me every day to come in here are the kids. Um, I like to have fun and I like to laugh and so the kids, I can always count on them to kind of bring that to me each day when I'm here and I like trying new things and so being able to kind of do research and find new um, things that I can do in my small groups or things like that. I mean, it might sound cheesy, but like the students, like they really motivate me because I see them going through hard things. And so when I have a hard day, I look at them and I know that um, I'm here because of them and that I can get through it if they can get through what they're going through. Hoping that I'm making a difference in the lives of either students, parents, caregivers, my school counselors that I'm working with, that is what motivates me because this is my purpose. It being my third year, I've been able to watch a lot of students grow over the last three years. And I think that motivates me every day to come to work and continue the work that I'm doing because I know that even though I won't see it right away, the results, I know that down the line, a lot of the work that not just me, but everyone in the building is benefiting students. Thank you guys so much for watching uh, Studio 595. Once again, this is the 20th episode, so this is uh, quite the milestone. 20 year anniversary, guys. Um, Yay. Not quite. Big number. Big number, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, really, though, for uh, listening to this episode, uh, as well as the school counselors across the district. Thank you for your spectacular work across the district. Um, we hope that you've enjoyed. And next episode, we are going to um, have more interviews in store for the for the podcast. Um, so until then, please feel free to follow us on all of our social medias. And until then, I have been producer Alex. I'm still Jules. I'm still Owen. And this has been Studio, Studio 595 20th Anniversary Edition. 20th Episode Edition.